Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Whistlekick, Martial Arts Radio, episode 315 is now. Today, we're talking about Street Fight. Specifically, I'm going to follow up on one author's piece at Marshall Journal. Give you some of my thoughts. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. Why should you care about my name? Well, honestly, it doesn't matter if you do, but I am the host of this show. I am the founder of Whistlekick. And if you're hanging around, hopefully you are. Hopefully you're going to Listen to other episodes if you haven't before. You might care the name of the guy who's in your ears right now. Of course, you can check out all of the stuff that we do at whistlekick.com. But if you want to skip to the podcast section, that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got a bunch of stuff going on. I even started a new YouTube show called First Cup. It's me with my first cup of coffee in the morning. It is not nearly as polished as this show, but... If you want to see behind the scenes, if you want to see my face every day, yes, every day, as I sit on the couch and I wake up with a cup of coffee and give you something to contemplate, it's short, it's less than 10 minutes, and yeah, it's a little less in-depth of martial arts. But this show is all about martial arts. That's why it's called Martial Arts Radio. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about a piece that happened on Martial Journal. So let me back up for those of you that don't know. We did a piece on Marshall Journal, the announcement for Marshall Journal. Marshall Journal, marshalljournal.com is a website where, bottom line, I am leveraging all of the connections I've made with wonderful people because of this show and getting them to write stuff. I've reached out, I've, I've collected my friends and said, hey, would you write something? Now, why are we doing that? Short version, we're doing that because one, it should exist. We need a website where people can contribute their thoughts on martial arts. We have some standards. They're not crazy, crazy high, but they have to be original pieces. We're editing them. They have to be worthwhile, right? If we get halfway through a piece and go, I don't even want to edit this anymore, we kick it back. And because of that, we're developing a following. People are checking stuff out. They're sharing it. We've got a post most days, you know, right now we're kind of in this three to four a week. We've had weeks where we've had more than seven. It's been really fun. One of those pieces comes from prior guest on this show, Mr. Lewis Martin. He wrote the book, The True Believers. 285? Where is it? 281. See, I have notes. They're in front of me. I planned ahead today. Episode 281, we heard from Mr. Martin about his time at a martial arts school that some would label a cult. Well, he stuck around. He wrote this piece, and it's called, I Watched Over 100 Fights on YouTube. Here's what I learned. Now, what happened is Mr. Martin spent a bunch of time, a ton of time, I am blown away at the amount of research that this man did, looking at street fights posted on YouTube. He watched, I I believe he said in the piece, he watched all of them again because he realized there was more data he had to collect. He is attempting, or attempted, to bring some objectivity to one of the most subjective things that people talk about, fighting. Now, because of that objectivity, his piece attracted a ton of attention. We even have a reaction piece up at Marshall Journal, and it's been great. And I really, really want you to check this piece out, because it's going to make you think, if nothing else. I've been thinking a lot about it over the last few weeks. And that's what today is about, is me giving you some of my reactions. I've also got some words from Mr. Martin that you won't hear anywhere else. So let's talk about it. I'm not going to assume that you've read the piece, but here's the gist. Mr. Martin watched all these fights, tracked a bunch of stuff, and released some statistical data. The piece that is interesting is not so much to me what he found, because what he found is pretty much in line with what I would have guessed. I mean, nothing to me is earth shattering, but there are some things that for some people are earth shattering. Have you ever heard the, the quote, all fights go to the ground or most fights go to the ground? That was not in his observation. I'll let you read the piece if you haven't, because the thing that I want to talk about more is the way other people have reacted to it. The comments that came in 
were amazing. Just mind-blowing number of comments. We had a mind-blowing number of views. People were sharing this all over the place. But the thing that I found most interesting is the way people were so unwilling to consider what I, I'm pretty sure is the most objective report on fights that anyone's assembled. I've never seen anything like this. It's great. But there are people that, because they've been in two or three fights, they argued the findings. I mean, just flat out refused to accept them. Well, I was in a fight, and that's not what happened. Well, that doesn't mean it's not true. We're talking about statistics. We're talking about data. And this goes back to one of these concepts in martial arts that if you find that there's a better way to do something, a lot of people will dig their heels in. They'll refuse to accept it because on some level their ego can't handle it. That there could be something different that is more legitimate, better, etc. that in a way invalidates the training that they've done. Oh, you mean I could have been doing it this way this whole time? I feel like I wasted my time. I could have been further along. I could be better. And that's not the way to look at it even though in a sense it is true. If you look at statistical data on fights and you say, well, you know, I've been in a couple fights or a fight or I watched a guy in a fight once and that report, this data does not validate what I saw, that doesn't mean that what you saw or what you experienced is wrong. It's okay. But we watch people and they commit so strongly to the things that they think or see or do, that they refuse to adapt. They refuse to accept reality. One of my personal principles is the notion that you can be overprepared or underprepared. You will never be perfectly prepared. And I choose always to be overprepared. It's something that people pick on me for. I get teased about it. That's okay. I don't care. I don't mind. Because I'm the guy with the lighter who doesn't smoke. Or I'm the guy with, you know, an extra shirt in the car. You know, little things like that. Because I am willing to consider reality as I see it. And I am constantly open to redefining what that reality looks like. There are things that I have learned from Mr. Martin's piece. Not dramatic things, but mostly what I have learned is that some of the things I believed that I did not have the opportunity to validate because I'm going to be honest, one of the things I am most proud of in my life is that I have never been in a street fight. I've worked really, really hard to avoid it. And I've been successful 100% of the time. But were I to get into a fight, some of the things that Mr. Martin's piece talks about line up with what I believed would happen were I to get in a fight. Could this be confirmation bias? Could this be why I like this piece? It, it could. I'm human. It happens. But I will always take in as much information, as much data as I can to build my most accurate view of reality. If we go back to college, I double majored in computer science and philosophy. Most of my writing, my research, the things that I was passionate about in college, as it related to philosophy, was on truth, on the notion of subjective versus objective truth. The moment we filter any information through our brain, it becomes subjective. When we consider the world, we consider an action, when we observe something, there is some element of bias because of our history, because of who we are. And that's not only okay, it's kind of necessary. We kind of have to let go of that. But when we look at something like fighting, when we look at something like trying to be prepared for self-defense, we want to get as objective as possible. Objectivity, that's data, that's statistics, that's numbers. And that's what Mr. Martin is attempting to provide here. And he gets closer than anything else I've ever seen. And that's why there's value in it for me. And that's why there should be value in it for everyone. Now, I'll be honest, the vast majority of content, uh, commentary the comments that we had coming in were amazingly supportive. People saying, wow, you did a ton of work. Thank you. 
But for the people out there who looked at it and said, this can't be right because it doesn't line up with what I know, well, you're being silly. Now, I did promise you I have some words from Mr. Martin. I reached out to him and I said, hey, I want to do a reaction piece on martial arts radio to your writing, to your research. What do you think? And he said, yeah, go ahead. And I said, is there anything you would add or change based on the comments that have come in, the feedback? And he said, yes. And these are all his words. Based on the feedback I've seen, I'd add two points. First one, people want to know how trained martial artists do versus normal people. My answer is that it's too subjective to make a judgment on who has training and who doesn't. With so many fights ending in mere seconds, there's just not enough data. If a guy gets knocked out and never threw a single punch, he could have been doing kickboxing for eight years for all we know. And his second point, Commenters also wondered about, quote, pride fights versus legitimate assaults. I did record this, but I didn't include it in the write-up because in a sizable number of the fights, it wasn't clear. However, in the fights where it was clear, they had almost equal rates of violent outcomes. Assaults were 3% less. This is interesting because I think conventional wisdom is that pride fights are very different from assault. But it's possible that fighting is fighting in any form, and always dangerous. That's the end of his words. Now, if you find the topic of street fights, of real, quote-unquote, real combat, to be interesting and you want more, I can think of no better place to go than our interview with Mr. Tony Blauer, founder of The Spear System, and a very well-accepted lecturer, teacher, honestly, researcher, consultant on real combat. He works with everyone from the military to law enforcement to individuals to martial artists. He's a great teacher. And he did a two and a half hour uh, clinic. I I can't define anything other than that. For his interview on this show, we broke it into two parts. I think I got through three questions. It was just, it was wonderful. And I've heard Mr. Blauer speak a number of other times And I'm honored to say I've never heard him speak better on the subject than the way he did for us. We're going to link that in the show notes, and that'll give you a little bit deeper dive. If you want to know about the psychology of fighting, if you want to know about why, why does the fight with a martial artist look just as crummy as the fight with a non-martial artist? Why does it turn to slapping and hair pulling and just junk why does it not look like the movies why do the end of most mma fights look dramatically different from the beginning there's a lot of psychology and physiology going on there and mr blower talks about that so we're going to link that in the show notes for this episode 315 we're also going to link to mr martin's piece at marshall journal And we will link to his interview here at Martial Arts Radio, episode 281, where we talk about his book, The True Believers. I would love to know what you think. I would love to know what else can we try to bring some objectivity to in the martial arts? What other research projects might Mr. Martin or others be interested in tackling? What do you want to see the data on? Go ahead, head on over to Whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. Check out the show notes. For this episode, leave a comment, let us know, or find us on social media. We are at Whistlekick everywhere. You can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I thank you for your time today. Thank you for indulging me as I get to talk about this stuff because I love what I do and I love that you're part of it. Thanks for your time today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 